Nowadays, we are studying the John, uh, Gospel of John, chapter 17. This is Jesus' prayer, the prayer of Jesus. And then we can uh, divide this prayer into three parts. First part is verse uh, 1 to 5. We see Jesus praying for himself, reconfirming the relationship between the Heavenly Father and the Son and talking about the glory of both the Father and the Son. So glorify, um, uh, glorify Him and glorify, glorify the Father and glorify the Son, Jesus. And then from verse 6 to 19, Jesus prayed for His disciples who will soon become apostles themselves. And then in the verse 20 through 26, he just prayed for the disciples of disciples, the future generation, actually, for you and me. The prayers of Jesus are mostly about others as a mediator, as we see like this. It is so-called uh, intercessory prayer. Intercessory prayer as the mediator. You know what? There's only one mediator between God and us. Amen? Jesus Christ. So intercessory prayer is not normal intercessory prayer as we pray before God for other people. It is the intercessory prayer of the mediator, the mediator, the Christ. Therefore, uh, since the 16th century AD, uh, the church the scholars and pastors say this prayer is the high, priest, high priestly prayer. High priestly prayer. And then, it is the prayer of Jesus, Jesus that we must receive as an example to follow the aim and action code of our spirituality for our prayer. Jesus prayed first for himself even though it is intercessory prayer, right? So you, when, you have, when you pray for other people, uh, I'd like to recommend you pray for yourself first. That's wisdom. That's the wisdom we can learn from our Lord Jesus. Essentially, he, he prayed for glory, glory of the Father, and uh, the Son is also glorified by fulfilling Father's calling his mission in the verse 4 he said Jesus said I glorify you father on earth having accomplished the work that you gave me to do here we see Jesus praying about the work being fulfilled the work is referring to the people of Jesus the disciples who were there with Jesus just pray for the protection and unity of his people, disciples, and asking for them to be holy, holy without giving into the, the evil and temptation of this world. That is the pray for his disciples. Then and then, Jesus proceeds to the next part. You know, um, at the time, Jesus prayed, the, uh, when he prayed for his disciples, we can notice how Jesus prayed as if he was reporting to the Father about what Jesus did for the people given to him. Before praying, before praying for his disciples, Jesus prayed like report to the Father for his ministry. At the time, Jesus said, his people as the people whom you father gave me Jesus out of the world. People given to me. People given to me. We have to notice that Jesus didn't say my people. Even though God gave him. He said people given to me. In other words, they are yours. 
yours. That is so important point, actually. Uh, we also must exercise this recognition because we have people around us. You have people around you. You have people who is given to you. At the time, you have to remember they are God's people, not yours, his. As you know, you have lots of people around you. Family members, neighbors, husband and wife, friends, brothers and sisters in church, or children. At the time, we must accept and recognize that they are given to you from the heavenly Father. Only when you are free from this illusion of a possession, they are mine, my people, you can truly fulfill the work, God's mission, and glorify your heavenly Father. In Jesus' prayer, he mentions what he did with the people given to him to glorify the Father. Though this prayer of Jesus, we disciples learn how, uh, through his prayer, I mean, through his prayer, we, his disciples, learn how we must approach the people who are given to us and strive for this goal in our prayers. For, this, for the people who are given to you, what manner of approach should you take, take to fulfill our given calling, his mission? What is our aim and code for them? The prayer of Jesus will guide us to our answer. That is our message we have to listen to today. So for the number one, for the people given to me, you have to reveal the name of God, the name of Jesus, the name of the Father. Reveal his name, not your name. We must raise the people who are given to us to stand on God's side when we reveal, manifest the name of our Heavenly Father because they belong to the heavenly Father. Let's see again verse 6 to the scripture. Just pray to the Father like this. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were. And you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Amen. The people around you are people whom God gave to you out of countless others in this world. Yes? Jesus proclaimed that he revealed the name of God for those people. During his time of flesh, Jesus revealed and manifested the name of the Father. As you know, the name meaning, meaning of name, represents the existence of honor, authority, ability, character of that people, right? So that means like that. Whenever Jesus did for his calling and to accomplish his mission, he always revealed Father's honor, Father's glory, Father's authority, Father's power. He always manifested the name of the Father. That's what Jesus did. That's what Jesus did. Jesus revealed the Father's name to his people and disciples. They have kept the Father's words. Actually, here, we uh, scratch our heads. Why? The wording are very precise here. Jesus didn't say, they will keep your word. Jesus said, they have kept your word. It's singular. Your word. Make sense? 
Actually, at the time, his disciples didn't understand what Jesus had talked to them in the upper room. And as we know, they're going to run away from Jesus. They're going to leave Jesus alone. They will betray Jesus. But Jesus said, they have kept your word, singular, word. What does it mean? What does it mean? At that time, actually, uh, when Jesus said your word, singular, we can understand that word is Jesus or, or just a single word. But there is the meaning. There is meaning. That means it like that. At least, at the very least, despite their faults and their weaknesses, they chose to stand on Jesus' side. Jesus' side. They were the people of Jesus who followed and were with Jesus at the time when Ezekiel Judah went out to sell Jesus. When he compared Ezekiel Judah, they were with Jesus. At the very least, they were Jesus' side, God's side. In this identity of faith, they will gather again despite their initial uh, cowardice, and Jesus took great value in this quality. They, even though they were very afraid, they gathered, they gathered together again, and then they met the risen Lord, our Jesus, in the upper room. That means they, at the very least, were on Jesus' side. This prayer of Jesus shows us what manner and character we must display for the people who are given to us. In all that we do, we must strive to reveal the name of Jesus, not my own. Only Jesus' name, his honor, his glory, his authority, not mine, not yours. Our aim and code must be about displaying and re uh, revering the glory, character, and identity of Jesus. What we will witness in the people given to us is that they will be raised to obey, follow, keep the word, and glorify the name of Jesus. So in all things, whether it be in words or action, we do uh, uh, we can do it good in the name of Jesus all the time. At least when we say, when we reveal to people given to us the name of Jesus, they can be in Jesus' side. That is so important point what you have to do for people uh, who God has given to us. At the time, God will receive glory. That is actually glorify God. And then God will glorify you and me too. That's why we can see the first Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. It is what it said. To this end, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and it may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power. Amen. You have calling? Did you receive the mission from God? Yes, you can do it. You can do it. Because God called you like that. And God always considers you are worthy to receive his calling and missions. That's great blessing. That is amazing grace from God. And then so what? Verse 12, so that, so that the, name of, the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, of course. According to the grace of our Lord Jesus and our Father God, yeah, his name may be glorified. 
May his name be glorified through us. When? When we fulfill our mission for people who are given to us. What should we do? Yes, of course. Reveal Jesus' name. Manifest his name, not our name, not your name. At the time, God received his glory and he glorifies you and me. That is his promise. That, that is his promise. And in his glory, yes, of course, we are glorified as well. At the time, there is one thing we have to remember when we reveal his name and let them, let them be on Jesus' side. There's like this, number two. Make known, make known that all things came from God. All things you have came from God. Let them know. Let them know. We reveal the name of God the Father and the Son Jesus to proclaim that we know for the people given to us. We work to make known that all things came from God, from God. Just pray like this. Look at again verse 7. Now, they know, they know, my people, I mean the people given to me, his disciples know that everything that you have given me is from you. Jesus has always emphasized that all power, all authority of Son came from Heavenly Father. Not only did he know this truth with perfect clarity, Jesus confirmed it to both his following disciples and his enemies, even his enemies. He always confirmed the power, miracles, words he has from, came from Heavenly Father. It was his code, which we also see in his prayers. In perfect clarity, Jesus knew that everything he had came from the Father, including the disciples and followers, followers, the people given to him. This prayer makes us understand how Jesus worked in his ministry. Whenever he, he did miracles, he didn't pretend they from by himself. He always let people know they are from Heavenly Father. Even though he is the Son of God, the Son, to show us great example. When he dwell and provide for the people given to us, we must recognize God as a source of our lives. We are not talking about anything ambiguous or abstract. We are talking about all tangible assets like clothes, clothes you are wearing now and daily bread and the money in your wallet and your skills or your connection with people or your influence to people. They all came from God. It is God's grace that we enjoy the privilege of prayer and worship like this. So, the time and the situation we can worship God and we can pray is also to from God. It's not my goodness. It's not because my effort was great. Everything we have, everything we can do came from God. First of all, you yourself recognize this truth. And then you have to let people given to you know this truth. That means whatever you give somebody, you have to let them understand that they came from Father God. You have to say, you have to give something, you have to support people 
in the name of God the Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. The time they understand whatever they receive from you, that is not from you, through you, from God. That is what we have to do for people who is given to us. At the time, God will be glorified through our ministry mission and our action. And he glorifies us. But I know this is not easy. Right? It's not easy. It's not easy. It's actually a great challenge. Too often we are tempted to turn the people given to us into people belonging to us. We want to say, you are my people. And we want to ask, hey, who's the side on you, huh? His side and my side. Our answer will be, we are Jesus' side. Simple, simple. There's no who's the side, only Jesus' side, God's side, right? But we are tempted to say, too tempted to ask like that, hey, who's the side on you? His side or my side? Mm hmm. Hey, you know what? Because I support you, I, I, I help you, you are my people. No, that's not the faith. We cannot do it. Because whatever we have comes from God. And whatever we did, we have to manifest the name of Jesus. But as I told you, it's not easy for us. Therefore, you have to pray for it. Next time you're going to see that, but in the verse Jesus said, I'm praying for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me. Because God gave him, he can say, he's my people. But continually just pray like that. Because they are yours. Even Jesus prayed like that. Before whom? Before disciples. There's just action to let disciples understand. They are, they belong to God. They belong to God. We have to pray like this. We have to pray like this. There's a one person who did a great job like that. That is King David we love. In his reign, uh, when you read the uh, uh, Chronicles and uh, Chronicles and uh, Second Samuel. King David wanted to build a temple for Father, uh, for God, I mean, Father God. He felt uh, sad and wrong to leave the Ark of God inside a tent while he enjoyed the castle and the throne by the grace of God. So he, cons he consulted with the prophet Nathan. Nathan agreed with King David, but the Lord God stopped David, no, 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 no. You can't build a temple for me. The greatness we must recognize in David is how he stopped. He stopped when God said no. As you know, David always, David was always eager to follow God's direction. When God said, hey, you have to do it, he did it. But when God said to him, no, stop, he always stopped, even though it is good things in his thought, in his opinion. In his opinion, building a temple for God is great things. It's good things. But God stopped him, and he stopped. But God told him, oh, you want to build my temple, my house? No, no, no. i going to build your household. It was a great blessing for David. So he was so great. He was so joyful. And then he wanted to prepare to build the temple of God. Even though his son Solomon is going to build up the temple, he can, David could prepare 
for building of, uh, build, uh, to build up the temple of God. From his property, from his, his, his wealth, he offered lots of things, lots of things. And, and, uh, and the, all the leaders of clans and tribes of Israel followed King David's example, happily offering their shares of wealth for this great deed. Think about that. They collected amount money, amount, amount of materials, great amount of materials. They can praise each other. Hey, pastor, you did like that. You are good. Oh, my elder, my brother, you did like that. You are good. Yes, we are good. They could do like that. But you know what? King David didn't do it. King David prayed before God with congregation. He prayed, everything belongs to you, Father. And continually, finally, he prayed like that. Let's see the first Chronicles chapter 29, verse 14. But who am I? And what is my people? That we should be able thus to offer willingly. For all things come from you. And of your own have we given you. He prayed like this. Everything we have, everything I have, has come from you, God. We give you only what already belongs to you. It's not mine. Yours. We are giving. We are giving only what already belongs to you. David prayed not in his room. He prayed before congregation. David himself knew whatever he had came from God, and he let all congregation understand this truth. That's what King David did. It is a very same prayer, very same prayer, prayer to Jesus' prayer we are studying now. Do you know what? The willing store for enjoy is not a situation of quality. Because you have lots of things, uh, you can, uh, because you, you have the lots of things. Because you have lots of things, uh, say again, you cannot give God lots of things because you have lots of wealth. It is a feature of faith that recognizes that all things came from God. At the time, you can have power to dedicate your life and whatever you have to God. We have that faith. We, have, we need that power. So I'd like to ask you, look at everything you claim to possess, you have. Do they truly belongs to you? Or that is to belongs to God? What's your answer? Whatever you have, is it yours or God's? I don't ask you but you may ask to yourself in your heart, what is your answer? Oh, well, it's mine because I'm very smart and I have many efforts for this, so actually it's mine. Okay, that is your level. But if you say, even though I had many efforts 
and I have the many wisdom, and I I am very smart, but they are gods. If it's your answer, you are a believer. You are the believer. That's the faith. That's the faith. Remember, whatever we have is from God. We have to know this truth first, and we have to let people God has given to us know this truth. At that time, we can fulfill the mission for people given to us. At the time, God will be glorified through our action, our ministry, and God glorifies our life. Do you believe it? Say amen. And also, we understand that our aim, our goal is refocused through this parency. The refined into the honest passion to guide the people given to us toward the gospel truth. For only through the gospel the people can enter the faith, right? There's a reason. There's a reason we want to manifest the name of Jesus and let them understand whatever we have, whatever, uh, whatever we have and help them is from God. There's a reason. Because we want to deliver the words of God. Why? Because when they listen to God's word, they can have faith, and when they have faith, they can have eternal life. That is the most important thing. That is the most important thing. So number three, for the people given to us, we have to, number three, deliver the words of God. We have to deliver the words of God. We must share the words of God given to us. We deliver the word of God, the word of life, the word of strength. That can change them, and the word of God changed their life. Therefore, Jesus prayed like this in the verse 8. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them, and have come to know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. Amen. Jesus is the word who is God. And yet he prays like that. For I have given them the words that Father gave me. Through this, the disciples came to know God and believe, know Jesus and believe Jesus Christ. Believe in Jesus Christ. So, Look at what Jesus said. He said, I gave them my word. He didn't say, he didn't say, I gave them my word. I gave them words you gave me. It's a very important lesson for us. We have to say the word of God to people given to us. Not my word, not my philosophy. That's worthless. My word, my philosophy, there's nothing happen. Especially to the children, we, we have talked lots of things, right? But what happened? Yes, that's it. Children, children don't listen to parents to talk. Maybe one of 10,000. No, because there is no power. There is no fundamental power for change the life. Only the truth, the word of God can change people's life. So that's why we have to deliver the word of God. At the time, you must receive the word of God for yourself. Father, I have a problem. What can I do? What, sh what, what, what part I have to read in the Bible? 
Oh, 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 son, wait a minute. I'm going to call the pastor first of all. I'm going to ask him, don't do it like that. Receive his words, his promise for yourself. And then deliver the words you had given from God to your children, to the people God has given to you. That is the power of the word. That is what you have to do. We have to reveal, manifest it, manifest the name of Jesus to people given to us. We have to, we have to let them know everything, whatever we have, and help them is from God. And then we have to deliver the word of God we have received. At the time, God will show us his glory in our life. And he glorifies you and me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, thank you for giving us message through Jesus' prayer. We thought they are mine. We thought children are mine and friends are mine. People around us are mine. But we recognize, we understand that they are yours even though you had given us. They are yours. Let us understand, Father God. Therefore, Father, please make us fulfill the mission for them who is given to us. Through that, Father, we want to glorify you and we want to be glorified from you in Jesus Christ. Please give us this faith, this faith. Please let us follow this truth. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.